Streaming Valley. Bom 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 de bom de bom de 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 de. You know what seems to be getting really popular lately? Cute games. That are creepy. Cute, creepy games. People like that. Yes, recently it does seem there's been an occasional theme popping up in indie horror games. The cute theme. Because why make something creepy when you could make something cute and creepy? It's better that way. <laughs> Like everyone else, I too enjoy cute creepy horror games once in a while. And regardless of whether or not I want to, I do find a lot of them on the internet. One of the most recent cute creepy games that caught my attention was the pink and bubbly Dreaming Mary, which seems to be aiming for the title of most adorable looking horror game ever made. It's pretty cute. Dreaming Mary is a free-to-download game made in, believe it or not, RPG Maker, said to be inspired by titles like Yume Nikki and E. And that's what originally got me excited about it. Yume Nikki and Eve are two of my favorite indie games ever made, and anything inspired by them tends to be really cool and really weird. And fortunately, it turns out, Dreaming Mary is really weird. Welcome to the dreams. My name is Atcha, and I'm your host on Radio Night Night. So the game starts off in this bright pink bedroom with a radio broadcast playing in the silence. To me, this radio is like the best thing in the entire game. You can literally keep standing here and listening to this radio for, well, way longer than you'd expect. Mary in the dream has pink hair and a pink dress, but does she look like that in the waking world? That's an excellent question, Sunway. Right off the bat, I just love the way the game introduced itself. It quickly presents you with its own unique little personality, which immediately makes it different from being any kind of rip-off of Yume Nikki or anything like that. Plus, that cute little voice makes me laugh. The next question was sent anonymously. Here's the first one. Does Mary have any kind of special power or an iconic item? What a fun question. Mary does indeed have a special power. In fact, her power is what created the dream world. Oh my, what? Mary's power created the dream world? I didn't think it was created by Mary. It's not like we're inside her head in a, in a dream that she created with her head or anything. So after this, once you exit the room, you might expect Dreaming Mary to be a big exploration game taking place in a large, odd, surreal dream world, like Yume Nikki. But it turns out it's actually quite different from that. Outside the bedroom, the game is very small. There are only about five different rooms you can explore in Dreaming Mary, and the game is really short. First, there's this room, with a sweeping rabbit lady. Oh my, hello there, Mary. My name is Bun Hilda. I'm the maid of your dreams. Tee hee. I don't trust you. Second, there's this library room with a penguin and a top hat sitting and reading. Thirdly, there's a room with a fox named Fox Anne. And finally, there's the last room with a big beautiful starry tree in the center. And this boar named Boris. Hello, Mary, my special girl. Are you having fun in your dreams? <laughs> I'm gonna say no. Aw, that's a shame, Mary. Did you want to do something more fun? Just a little longer, Mary, and we can do some more pleasurable things together. No. <laughs> well, I didn't um realize the game was going to go in that direction. My apologies. Also, spoiler alert, the rest of this video is going to spoil Dreaming Mary. Might not want to watch it if you're going to play it. So yeah, it turns out Dreaming Mary actually deals with some pretty dark subjects. Like I said, the game is short. To complete it, you basically have to keep revisiting the same few rooms over and over and over again. The gameplay isn't too interesting. You just kind of help your three little animal friends by solving a few puzzles and playing a couple mini games. But the creepiness sets in later, when you're done with all that, and your animal friends vanish. Well, the music stopped, and Bunny Lady disappeared. Also, what was that falling from the ceiling that I just saw? Was that a body? Uh, oh god, no. The only character left here is Boris. I don't want to talk to Boris. If you can get three seeds from your friends, we can go deeper into the dream together, Mary. All right? No, I don't want to go deeper into the dream with you. Oh god, I made him angry. I made Boris angry. Running away now. Goodbye. <sighs> Shit, what do I do now? There's nowhere else to go. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. 
There's a secret here. There's a room hidden behind this painting. I wonder what's in there. Oh, yep. I knew this would happen. I saw it at the beginning of the video. Well, okay then. Is that the end? That's a delightful ending screen. Everyone's dead. What does this mean? Well, this is actually, in my opinion, the coolest thing about Dreaming Mary. Like most RPG Maker horror games, it has several different endings. And each ending is varying different degrees of creepy. Believe it or not, you can actually go through the entire game without seeing anything fucked up or creepy at all. If you do what Boris tells you to do, and you don't solve any of the puzzles in a certain way, you can actually just get a normal ending with nothing dark or horrifying about it at all. But if you explore, if you break the rules, and you look for things that are hidden or obscured, you'll find more mysterious stuff. Up. More uncomfortable stuff. I really like this aspect of the game. I like how you can just choose to stay in denial, stay in your dream, deny reality, and just ignore anything that's disconcerting. And as a result, you get a quick, boring ending. But if you go deeper and you choose to get uncomfortable, you can learn the truth. The game will turn into a horror game. Make it through the game in a certain way and do things right, and you can actually wake Mary up in the real world. Here, you become Mari, the actual little girl, who's obviously facing a very dark reality. And if you get the best ending, you can escape. So what is the actual meaning of the story? Well, there are a few theories, but most people agree on one. Most likely, Mary's father is the one abusing her. If you listen to the radio at the beginning of the game and you keep listening to it, you'll hear that Mary has five people in her life. Her father, her mother who's passed away, a maid, an uncle, and a tutor. It's also revealed on the radio that Mary lives isolated in a large mansion with her father. If the one creepy ending where the shadow gets you tells us anything, it's that the father likely killed all of these people. Or maybe just got rid of them, erased them from Mary's life. Also, it turns out they're making another one of these games. It's called Blue Dreams, and it's gonna be about a little boy who might end up being connected to Mary somehow. So maybe then we'll know more. But anyway, all in all, I like Dreaming Mary. It was entertaining for an hour of my time. It was creepy, it dealt with dark, realistic subjects in a painful, uncomfortable manner. Art-wise, it looks better and more professionally drawn than almost any RPG Maker game I've ever played, actually. And its story was buried deep enough that I felt just interested enough to spend my time pulling it apart. I do admittedly wish the game had been a little longer, or the gameplay had been more interesting. Like, I would never put this game up with Yume Nikki or E, because those games have a ton of intrigue and a ton of replay value for me. With Dreaming Mary, replaying it even once was a bit of a bore. Doing all the same puzzles and riddles for a second time, reading almost all the same dialogue just to get a different ending, well, it could have been more engaging. And I do wish the dialogue and relationships between the different characters had been a bit more expanded upon. It was just so short and over with. But hey, it was still entertaining for a free one hour long game. And well, it was cute. Cute and pink. Like pink ink. By the way, special thanks to my top Patreon supporters on Patreon. You make it all.